Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Stefan, and today we're going to continue on with episode 6 of our series of the Tall Swarm and the highest difficulty settings in-game. As a reminder, we are playing with this build, and we're playing with max advanced AI starts, Grand Admiral, no scaling, high aggressiveness, and of course, Glavius' ultimate AI Mega Mod. So without further ado, let's resume with our save, shall we? Uh, we are in a pretty good situation so far. All our borders are nice and fortified. Our energy current production is quite high in order to sustain the terraformation of all our worlds into hive worlds, and of course to sustain our fleet once we build it up and start attacking our neighbors. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to attack the foundation of Takanja, uh, because even though right now they're equivalent in terms of economy and technology, soon enough I'll simply be able to outpace them in tech, and our fleets will be able to sweep through their territory and uh, take them over. As far as our neighbors to the north go, uh, we are in a similar position with those guys, uh, however we do still have the purifiers over to our west, and uh, if we try to attack these guys and uh, possibly consume them, well we're going to have to face the purifiers next. And the purifiers are a little bit more scary, they have quite a bit more fleet power because they have all those boosts to it, uh, as well as a higher priority in order to build it. AI actually has priorities. Uh, some empires are more likely to build a big fleet than others, uh, because, well, that's the whole purpose within the game. To simply conquer other empires and sustain yourself through conquest. And in a similar fashion, that is what we're going to do today. In the next couple of years, I'll be building up my economy even further. Um, it is a two-pronged reason. First and foremost, I'd like to have more energy credits for more terraformations on my planets. And uh, secondly, I do need a lot of energy credit outcome. And secondly, I do need a lot of energy credit output to actually sustain the fleets that I'll be building. And to actually build the fleets, I'll be uh, making sure to manufacture a lot of alloys on my big ass forge. We're basically going to spam foundry arcologies on this planet and uh, resell the pops to it so that it's uh, developed faster. And in a decade or so, we'll be able to complete our fleets and begin the invasion to finally feed the swarm. Already, we had just unlocked genetic resequencing and advanced traits, and that means that we can finally go ahead and modify our spooters even further. And so this is what I came up with, the Spooter Supreme. We're only going to have one variety of Xenophage once we begin this conflict, and in order to ensure that the extra bonuses from Aerodite apply to all of my pops, uh, I'm going to make sure to modify my whole species. Uh, otherwise, I'm going for decreased housing usage and increased pop growth speed. So that's going to be quite nice. We're going to be able to completely overwhelm the planets once we take them. The pop growth speed is going to allow us to quickly colonize all the planets that are going to be left behind deserted by the food that we take. Instead of uh, letting them sit there fully developed, but absolutely useless. Because otherwise, uh, our advance into the foundation of Takanja is actually going to increase our empire size substantially and uh, is going to compromise our further uh, tradition and research speed. And so making sure that we actually develop all their worlds is going to be a priority. Now we can apply this template to the whole species and uh, finish it in a mere 60 months. At this point we had enough unity to unlock another tradition tree, and I decided to go ahead and uh, pick Discovery. Discovery is going to help us out quite a bit because it's going to reduce the usage of minerals in our research departments, and since that's the main consumption of minerals, it's going to help us out with uh, allocating more of them towards alloys.
Now we have finally reached the point where we can get administrative efficiency. Uh, this means that our empire size, which is uh, way over our admin cap, is soon going to be very much under control. Alrighty, it is the year 2301, and our empire is finally ready to pop off and start conquering. So to do that, let's uh, design our pretty much final battleships. Uh, ideally, this is what your battleship should look like, uh, with the exception of uh, the X weapon slot being an arc emitter instead of uh, a lance, and having to have armor and shields, unless of course uh, you know for sure which uh, weapon type your opponent likes to use more. Uh, double afterburners make sure that uh, you're able to come into your opponent's land and take them out very quickly. And of course, our ship intellect should be set to artillery. This will be our distant hive barge. And the theory behind the fleet is that you're able to outrange them and destroy most of them before they can actually start attacking you. Uh, that way, that minimizes casualties and uh, it's going to allow us to stay in enemy territory for much longer. Our first fleet will be known as High Fleet Behemoth and will consist of 10 battleships. I'll increase that number once we get enough resources to uh, start supplying these fleets with more hive barges. For now though, I'd like to have a couple fleets uh, that are able to hold their own ground because uh, eventually we're going to want to split them off and quickly and efficiently take out enemy territory. Now I'll transfer one of the battleships from Behemoth and into the Horatio Starfleet which will from now on be known as High Fleet Kraken. So let's go ahead and make it the same size as our previous fleet. And so let's go ahead and reinforce this one as well. So now let's wait for all of them to be produced through a single station. Okay. Uh, I'm actually also going to include some uh, large weapon picket destroyers uh, just in case uh, the enemy has missiles. I really don't want to be caught with my pants down and so uh, let's make sure that our fleet can sustain something like that. Alright, we are now all gathered up and ready to go. So, without further ado, let's set the transport ship to follow our main fleets and declare war. Absorb these Xenos. Uh, they do have a non-aggression pact, but that's not really going to save them. Uh, these guys are pretty far away, doesn't matter, let's roll. Uh, to fully achieve our tactic of rapid conquering, aka Blitzkrieg, and we're going to go ahead and uh, get some rapid deployment going. Defense in depth is really not going to help us considering how we're going to be deep in enemy territory, not ours. Uh, right now our main objective is going to be to smash the enemy fleet that's located over here. Or actually not located, is going ahead to attack us. Well, that's rather convenient, considering how we're going to be merging up at this system. 
And it's gonna be alright. Oh no. Meanwhile, we have rising unemployment on our planets. How awful. Let's feed the drones extra, considering how we'll be getting a shit ton of food from all these planets. Oh well, that was rather easy. We had taken our first nest. And now we have a shit ton of pot production. Perfect. Also, apparently we have... Spooters. On our newly conquered planet. Um, I'm not sure how that makes sense, how these guys just instantly resettled there, but that's alright. I guess they're there as just uh, representatives of this hive uh, to make sure they know who's boss and uh, to make sure they know who's eating them. Alright, while this planet is getting infested, let's go ahead and uh, try to purge their fleets. Let's see if we can catch them off guard. Yep, right from the flank. Let's go. All these attacks. And their big ships got absolutely wrecked. Small ships kind of stick around. However, they don't have a lot of fleet power and they're not dealing a lot of damage, so not a big concern. Now, what is a big concern, however, is the fact that these newly conquered buildings are going to be posing a major threat to our economy. There's going to be nobody to work them, considering how uh, most of the population is just going to be getting purged. And so I'm just going to disable all these jobs, and also demolish some of these districts. Districts can increase our empire size quite substantially, and I really would like to avoid that. So let's demolish all that, leave a couple districts behind for our pops to work, and uh, continue on. But now, let's get back to business. Let's engage the last enemy fleet in the system. Absolutely destroy them. And uh, move on. They have one fleet remaining over in Impan. And uh, if we can catch that, that'll be uh, pretty much all of their fleets. Since we're using neutron launchers and particle lances on our ships, it means that pretty much anything that gets hit by it is going to die without having a chance to retreat. Uh, that means that the losses for the enemy are going to be quite substantial and we're not going to have to deal with too many uh, straggler fleets. Alright, last little fleet. Absolutely melted. As well as their last remaining planet in this little cluster. So let's go ahead, disable all the buildings as per protocol. and take some time to take a look at our home economy and manage that too. Uh, now we could just resettle pops over to these newly conquered worlds, uh, however stability is going to be quite low, DBC is going to be quite high, and we're going to suffer all sorts of problems relating to resource production. So for now we're just going to wait these purged pops out and um, make absolute bank from all the food production. Otherwise I'll be sending my fleets around the remaining territory and start gobbling up land. And with this little demonstration of strength, I believe it's a good time to end the episode. Uh, next time we'll finish consuming this little empire, uh, turn our eyes over to our north and destroy the superior force, and then start looking at the rest of the galaxy to conquer. And so with that, thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. As you can see, this strategy is quite powerful. And of course, I'll be doing another video on the 2 Quintillion IQ Swarm in a couple of days. So, see you there. Bye bye.